this section we're going to go back to Taylor series and we're going to combine it with the idea of intervals of convergence. So we're going to start with writing a Taylor polynomial for f of x equals 1 over x centered at 1. And if we do this, if we find all of these derivatives and evaluate them all at 1, what we end up with is that 1 over x is equal to 1 minus x minus 1 plus x minus 1 squared minus x minus 1 cubed and so on. And this is the same polynomial that we got in the previous section when we rewrote that 1 over 1 minus x so that it fit with this and we wrote the power series. So Taylor series, power series, really the same thing. And within these power series, if we think of it in terms of this Taylor notation, this is R and this nth derivative over n factorial is our a sub n value. So let's write a Maclaurin series for sine of x. Now we have to evaluate each of these at zero. The function at zero is zero. The first derivative at zero is one, and so on. And what we end up with is that the series for sine of x is equal to x minus x cubed over 3 factorial plus x to the fifth over 5 factorial and then the pattern would continue on the x to the seventh over 7 factorial and so on and we can write this in sigma notation n equals 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the n x to the 2n plus 1 over 2n plus 1 factorial. <coughs> and we're going to find the interval of convergence for this. So we're now going to use our, lim our uh, ratio test. And now we simplify this. And what we're left with is x squared. This is actually essentially one that we've done before. This limit is equal to 0 
which is always less than 1. So this series n equals 0 to infinity, negative 1 to the n, x to the 2n plus 1, over 2n plus 1 factorial. converges for all x. But here's the tricky thing. Um, although it converges for all x, it doesn't necessarily converge to sine of x. These derivatives are being evaluated at one specific point, and there could be other functions that have the same derivative values. But we do know that regardless of what it's converging to, the function can accurately be, accurately be given by this Taylor series plus a remainder. If it isn't converging to sine of x, it's going to be off by some amount. And this remainder is the n plus first derivative evaluated at z over n plus 1 factorial x minus c to the n plus 1. This is something that we did when we were looking at these Taylor and McLaurin polynomials, the remainder term. And the theorem says that if the limit of this remainder is equal to 0 for all x in the interval of convergence, then the Taylor series for f converges and equals f of x. So let's show now that that Maclaurin series that we just came up with does converge to sine of x for all x. Well, for this, the n plus first derivative is either going to equal plus or minus sine x or this n plus first derivative could equal plus or minus cosine x. It would all depend on how many terms for the polynomial we're writing out. So, because the n plus first derivative is either going to be sine or cosine, worst case scenario for our n plus first derivative evaluated at z is going to be 1 for all z on real numbers. That has to be the case. Therefore, our remainder has to be bigger than or equal to 0. And it's given by this expression. And since it's since we wrote the Maclaurin series, it's just x to the n plus one. And we know that this remainder will always be less than or equal to the absolute value of x to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 factorial. Because we said worst case that the n plus 1 derivative can be is 1. And since n plus 1 factorial is always positive, we have this as a worst case expression for this. And now, to show that it converges to sine of x, we look at the limit. Limit as n goes to infinity of the absolute value of x to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 factorial. And if you look back at your notes from the very first section of this chapter, we found that this limit was equal to 0.
for each fixed value of x. So what we've just shown is that sine of x does equal this infinite series for all x. So some guidelines for these Taylor series. Differentiate several times to find a pattern. And then use the sequence from 1 to find the Taylor coefficients and determine the interval of convergence. And within the interval of convergence, determine whether or not the series converges to our function. So in here we want to find the Maclaurin series for f of x equals sine x squared. And we could list out a bunch of derivatives, but you might notice if you do that, it gets a little messy pretty quick. So let's consider a new function g of x being sine of x. Remember this is equal to x minus x cubed over 3 factorial plus x to the fifth over 5 factorial minus x to the seventh over 7 factorial and so on. That means that f of x is equal to g of x squared. Well, we have a property from a previous section that says that we can just apply that exponent to each term, to each value of x in these terms of the expansion. So this becomes x squared minus x to the 6 over 3 factorial plus x to the 10th over 5 factorial minus x to the 14th over 7 factorial and so on. Some of these series can be that simple provided that we know some other ones. If we can recognize that really we're just squaring the x's for sine of x, well, it's a lot easier to find a series for this. So here are some practice problems for this. We'll finish up the section in another shot.